Greetings, programs. Welcome to Hydaelyn's Heroes, the Final Fantasy XIV podcast where whether you're white, warrior of light, or warrior of darkness, all are welcome on the star we call home. Uh, Piers and I are here. We're back, and we are going to talk about MSQ finally. Yay! That was the plan last week, but we, we're we doing it this week. And we're, di- and we're dividing it into two because there's so much MSQ. Like, to do it in one show would be like three hours. So no one wants to hear three hours of MSQ. So to dive right in, uh, joining me as always is my boy Pierce. He is the Cinco de Papi. Uh, he is the Gwyn to my Maiden in Black. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> what's up, Pierce? Gwyn to Maiden in Black is that a Dark Souls That's... slash Demon Souls reference? Yeah, I guess I... it was off the cuff. I didn't plan it. I'm dumb. I'm not sure who the parent, who the mother is to Gwyn's kids. So I guess that yeah. All right, I can dig that. That's fine. Anyway, hello, hi, hello. How you doing? Story time. Good. I'm ready. Are you guys ready for story time? Because we're about to get into story time with the most interesting MSQ we've ever had. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't know. I would. You say interesting. I say mid. Most mid MSQ we've mid, ever uh, had. Hmm. Like, I mean, we'll get into rankings, but like, it's not. It's not up there. I'm not gonna lie. All right. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll, get there. <laughs> we'll get there. So again, let's just dive right in. Um, initial thoughts, though, before we started to venture out, like the wrap up on the MSQ uh, leading up to Dawn Trail, like 6.55, 6.5. They weren't the best, right? I mean, they were okay. It was it was very much an introduction to. I mean, okay, wait. We did Zodi uh, Zermis. We did Zermis yeah, and yeah. six point five, right? Yeah. So we we kind of wrapped up the whole thirteenth story. So yeah, we're talking about six point five five. Wuklamot. Okay, so six point five five. Yes. So we met. We meet Wuklamot. We get to go out on a little adventure with her out in um, the font. Ether Font. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. And you know, it's it's nice. You know, she it's it's a cool little introduction to the character. I think, um, you know, and then we come back and we get to eat that giant Calibri that we sl- uh, slew. Sure, yeah. And she gets to try some, I guess, some spice for the first time or something like that. I can't remember. I just remember there being some sort of, like, joke about some something was super spicy for somebody. <laughs> yeah. And then the, it was like, the, oh, haha. Yeah, the curry, yeah, I think. The curry. Yeah, I think so. And then, um, so, so, you know, I, I liked it. And it was, I know that it was also very sentimental for... Um, for Cryo as well, because she really wanted to go to the adventure, but she didn't want to, like, leave the students of Valdesian behind, and that's when Graha kind of, like, stepped up and was like, hey, listen, I've had my turn to adventure, all right? Now it's your turn. I'll, I'll, you know, watch home base while you go out and have fun. So I thought that was really cool as well. So And she got a new I, I job. Kind of, yes. So. You know, she showed off her Pictomancer skills when fighting the giant Calibri, so that was cool. And, uh, yeah, I, I ultimately, I thought it was an okay little lead up to um to 7.0 for sure and, and i think you nailed it it was okay you know yeah. my, my my one gripe with 6.55 was that she was so naive like at what point we're like you know what that's a great idea you should be a leader of people that we know nothing about and i'll help you do it like what yeah what she she was very much like the naive, little hopeful, you know, bright-eyed kind of thing going on. And I guess when you, you know, you're looking to a leader, you kind of want somebody who kind of knows what's going on. But I don't know. Wuklamont's an interesting character, which we'll definitely dive into a little bit later. But I mean, you know. we've always, you know, our Warrior of Light has always had no problems diving in at the slightest provocation of like, hey, there's going to be adventure. Like, okay, we're all on board. Doesn't need much of a reason. This just seems antithetical to like, wait, what? <laughs> Like, yeah, there could have been something else that that tied us over there. Like, maybe that thought of the city of gold that is overlaying in, in this entire expansion, maybe that could have like pulled us over, and then we get pulled into the political drama. But it, that's that's the road they took. That's fine. Whatever. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's okay. It's okay. I, I it was it, ultimately it was kind of the city of gold because I think that's what kind of like perked up Aaronvald to that's want what, to join the expedition. Yeah, he was like, again. He's like, eh, whatever. Oh. He's like, oh, city of gold. What? Yeah? City of gold. Okay. Yeah, count me in because well, we'll get into that as well. But his his story kind of does, you know, kind of revolve around the city of gold and mm-hmm. and his family. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll get to that. But yeah, I don't know. I think it was kind of more supposed to be sort of this kind of like. 
less stakes kind of thing because they wanted this to whole feel like a summer vacation kind of thing like yeah. we saved the world in in endwalker literally saved like not just the world but probably like the the reality like the, all of the universe right yeah. so like okay let's let's yeah. go have a little fun adventure you know let's th though they need some help with this succession thing sure like we'll we'll go do that because why not we have nothing else to do so so and we find out they're pieces of crap you know the more of less and has no problem dusting off their hands like nah i'm done with you you, of course. <laughs> you got your own so i mean yeah. fine okay um now let's start out with dawn trail proper uh we start off with the boat trip um this is one of the more interesting boat trips uh, even to like Stormblood from uh, Limsa to Kugane. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought this was a pretty cool showing of a boat trip. Uh, we even had a big storm that we had to rustle through and and, and then it really highlighted some characters that were like, why are they highlighting this this jeweler? Like, <laughs> Why does this yeah. character matter? Stay tuned. It will matter. Yep. There were a few NPCs that we had to interact with that seemed kind of out of place. There weren't just like, you know, generic NPC number 4078 or something like it was, you know, it kind of felt like there was a reason why they were uh, being introduced. And uh, yeah, the whole the whole storm thing, I guess, was supposed to be kind of an allegory for how the rest of our trip in, in uh, Tural is going to be like, oh, the, the storm is coming. So like, you know, the rest of the story is going to have this like storm coming and, you know, it's kind of supposed to be symbolic. So it was it was cool. You know, and some yeah. people fall overboard. They got to go save them. And it's, it's you know, it, it was kind of a, a nice adventure to start with. There was no dungeon to hop into like we did in Stormblood. At least there was the Siren Song Sea, which we got to do. But, you know, I, I think the lack of battle content might be something we can discuss <laughs> sure, as we yeah. get into this. But, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a nice little little uh, little voyage that we had. So I, I will say the one thing that was maybe missing is like, you know, the last boat voyage that we had had Vana on it. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I was hoping for a little bit more. But what I liked is that the storm itself was important because it affected yes. things in multiple areas um, that we needed to help with. So that, that's true. It set it up some story beats. Yeah. Um, we finally get to Thule and the, the these zones, I'm just going to say the zones here are just absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. From Thule proper to Macalinia Woods, as I like to call it, to Shaloni, was just you know a western. Everything's just gorgeous. Your thoughts on zones and is it? Do you have a favorite as far as aesthetic? When it comes to the zones, I mean, yeah. I've got a few that I I, I like. Um, I I think Tuliala as a city is very very cool. Uh, yeah. I like how it's multi layered. It's it's very uh, vertical. Oh yeah, I like the um, verticality, which is which is very cool. Um, it can get a little tricky to navigate, uh, especially if you don't have the um, the Ethernet unlocked yet. Um, sure. But ultimately, I thought it was really well laid out. I haven't done any of the jump puzzles yet. I still have to find them, but I know that there's a couple I think in in Tuliala that I have to track down and do because those are always kind of something fun to do on your off time if you're bored or something. Um, yeah, I don't know where but, they are either. So if anybody in the comments or here in chat wants to tell us where they are, um, we'll yeah. jot them down because I would love to do them as well. I've, I did the ones in uh, Rodzahan, so that was cool. I'd love to do these yeah. ones in Thule. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's really cool. That's really fun. And ultimately, I thought it was just a really well designed little city that they they come up with. It, it really does did feel like. You know, something you would see in, like, the New World or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. they're calling it now. You know what I mean? So, um, like it there. Uh, we'll talk about zones when we get to the zones. Let's let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, I, I, okay. I have a few that I do like, but, um, but yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. All right. So, we get our, um, well, I guess it's kind of tied in together. Or the overall tour and our first palace visit are kind of tied in together. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start with the first palace visit. Uh, you really got to know the players. They really set the stage for the players here. Um, we got the brother. We got Zoralja. We got Bakul Jaja. Why am I forgetting the brother's name? It's a uh, It starts with a K. Now I'm forgetting it. <laughs> it's not koala, is it? No, it's not. That's a that's an animal. <laughs> koala bear. Um, I I can't remember. Somebody hit us up in the chat, it's please. Koana. It's koana. Koana? I was close. Yeah, it, was okay. koala. it was koala, but with an N. 
with an N. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I like the, the setup for these characters. Um, right off the bat, you're like, okay, Bakul, he's going to be a big pain in the ass, big a-hole. Uh, Zoral Jaw was kind of a mystery. I didn't know which way they were going to go, like if he was going to be the dutiful son or uh, if there was going to be some layering. We kind of knew what Luke meant. She was the naive one setting out. And then we had the quiet brother, who Kawana, who I immediately was like, okay, we're immediately joining up with him. I don't know what his story is. But like I just like see in his design, like he's not someone that I'm gonna fear or <laughs> like I feel like he's gonna be uh, someone that joins us in our in our entourage at some point. So, what do you think about the uh, participants for the Dawn Servant? The participants, yeah. I mean, it's let's put it this way: they didn't really um, shake up the initial like vibe of any of the characters okay and what i mean by that is like as you said it was very clear that koana was going to be someone who we ended up teaming up with uh, i mean they both koana and wuklamat are like clearly the adopted children of uh galul jaja mm -hmm. so like they kind of grew up together and and kind of have this bond that i don't think any of the other players have uh, i mean zoral ja is the biological child of galul ja but it doesn't seem like they're very close. Um, it seems like yeah. Zorul has always kind of been on his own, kind of been a loner, kind of been, a, kind of been an outcast a little bit, um, and he's got his own views on things. Um, but but and yeah, I, I mean, and, it, and even before Dawn Trail hit, like, a lot of people assumed Zorul Ja probably was going to possibly betray at some point, like, because Bakul is so obviously a villain that, like, a lot of people were like, oh, he's just, like, you know, the he'll be the villain for a little bit, but then, like, the real villain is going to come out. the annoyance you know I mean? villain, and then you get yes. the villain proper. Exactly. Uh, there was a few surprises that we had with these characters, um, specifically with Bakul, which we'll get to. Um, you know, a few, a few cool things that ended up happening with their character, but for the most part, it was pretty signposted how these archetypes were going to play out, and for the most part, there was no real shake up to any of that. Um, but I enjoyed the characters for what they were. I thought they were interesting enough um, uh, as, you know, contestants for the throne, as it will. Uh, and I liked Galul Jaja as well. I thought he was a cool character. Um, and there's a few surprises with him that I can't wait to discuss, too. But uh, ultimately, yeah, I thought that was a really cool scene, really cool setting the stage, uh, kind of. Uh, an introduction to well 7.0 in the story so well i mean you might as well just say like gulu jaja he's he's a two-headed uh mm -hmm. mamoja uh so he's got he's the leader the voice of resolve the voice of reason the voice of resolve is the warrior half the voice of reason is the magical half and we see right from the beginning the voice of reason is Hi. enshrouded um so like yep. and, and he says oh he's he's asleep um, he needs to conserve his energy, build up his energy back up. So he sleeps for long periods of time. So yeah. at first thought, I was like, okay, I want to buy that story for now. So, um, overall tour, how do, how do you feel about the overall tour? Cause I thought it was, it, it took so long. <laughs> it took, it was a long tour. It was a long yeah. tour. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like they, they kind of have to do that to really introduce the new city. Um, I think they probably did something similar with Charlayan, if I remember right. And yeah. then for like Razad Han, I mean, like we yeah, went we there went very all the way around. Briefly. Yeah, we went all the way around Razad Han, but like we were there briefly before we could even unlock the teleport crystal. I think we were just there for like a very brief time. Then we left, and then we came back. I think. Um, so this time they just tried to like pack everything into one little quest where they showed us everything. And I thought mm -hmm. it was cool enough, you know, but yeah, it, the city is so large, yeah. you know, for better or for worse that it was just a lot of walking. So I, I'm wondering if the, it, cause we seem to get these city hubs early and it's just, it's just a drag. You're in the excitement of a new expansion and you kind of want to get in on it right away. And for sure. For the first, I want to say three hours, it was the boat ride and it was the city. And it was just a lot of talking. Um, and, and you hinted on it for the lack of, you know, battle content, you know, getting in in the mix. I, I'm wondering if Square needs to look into maybe at least maybe push it out, 
they, they've done two zones to start out people. Um, I'm wondering if they need to do that, but then push out the city part uh, till after that's all done. Mm. It's a possibility. I it, my my mind automatically goes back to, and I know there's people in chat right now who can uh, verify this, but uh, Stormblood, which basically threw us into uh, combat immediately, and yeah. that was really bad because it ended up clogging <laughs> up the servers. Uh, Rob on Extreme is a meme that will forever live in our hearts. Um, where and you know <sighs> you could also make the argument like, okay, so don't just just don't do instance content for the first whatever, but. I think what they're trying to avoid is just these zones being so incredibly, hugely populated with players just killing and slaughtering everything or doing these quests or whatever, and it just jams up everything. Um, so they kind of put us in this city to kind of just, like, slow us down. You know, the people who want to rush forward, cause skip cutscenes, they're just going to rush forward. They'll get to the zones first. And the people who just want to lay back, relax, enjoy, you know, look around Tuliala a little bit, like, they'll be... It's just kind of separating the player base, I guess. Maybe is that, that that's their idea. And I think that's what they did with the whole two different zones thing, too. I definitely think they, they looked at, you know, Stormblood. They were like, yeah, we screwed up really bad. And so yeah. in, in I get um, that. Shadowbringers... Shadowbringers, they were like, okay, well, you know, you got here, you can go check out to see what Alice is doing, you can go check out to see what Alpha is doing, like, that's your pick. So it kind of, again, split up the players to go do um, some stuff, so it didn't jam. And, and I've seen that but, in other games, um, like World of Warcraft, but, like, you're you're in the mix, you're in the fighting, you know, you're, you're playing the game um, instead of just watching some story beats for the first few hours. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. That's fair. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe I, they, they might have they might have went they might have went a little too overboard with the cutscenes and the in the in the, the dialogue and the exposition in this uh, the story in this expansion for sure. They might have gone might have dialed it a little too much to one side, and they probably could dial it a little bit back. <laughs> All right, so we talked to that. There's you know multiple zones that you could start with. Um, there's Urkopacha and Koza Maalka. Uh, which mm -hmm. one did you go start with first? Uh, I went with Urkopacha. I just decided to I go in too. order. Um, and plus, I honestly, I like the Pelo Pelo a little bit more because we've dealt with Hanu Hanu before. Well, yeah. Vanu Vanu, like we've dealt with them. We know what kind of what their deal is. So I was like, oh, OK, let's check out this, you know, mercantile race. This see, they seem very shrewd, very, you know, like crafty kind of people. And I was like, yeah, I, I dig that. I vibe with that. So I'm going to go see what's up with them. So I did. I did Urko Pacha first. So um, before we get to that, though, you know, they, they lay down what we need to do. We got these seven feats, right? Seven feats. Yeah, there were seven feats, and then the eighth stone is what we fill in for the for the final thing, right? Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. That's supposed to be like the the, the future in the making is like the eighth one, right? The yeah. you know, yeah. Um. So yeah, part of the tour is we got to see uh, all of Gulo Jaja's feats, and he That's had right. a set of them carved in stone. To explain his path to unifying to to the Yolal, um, and that's what uh, our path to becoming the Dalton servant is: is to retrace those steps and to show uh, that we can be for those people and lead the people and, and lead a united country. Um, so yeah, we both went to Urkopacha uh, to see the Pelo Pelo, um, and they gave us a, a trial. Um, seems pretty simple: um, get an alpaca. Yes. But beyond just getting an alpaca, okay. Beyond just getting an alpaca, we also needed to get a harness for this alpaca or we wouldn't well, be able to like bring it back, right? How you get the alpaca is up to you. <laughs> Remember, Zerol Jaws like, ah, screw that shit. I'm just going to go get it. I'll exert my will and strength. <laughs> yeah, doesn't he like, he? so he, he goes off and he like literally just picks one up and he brings it back. And isn't that the golden one? Yeah. That does it, yeah. He's just like, oh, I found this shiny alpaca real fast. He's, you know, I, one one in the 8,000 chance. And I just found it real quick. I found I, this <laughs> shiny golden alpaca, and I said, you come here now. And it respected my authority and uh, decided to come with. <laughs> I mean, he ended up, like, passing the trial, though, didn't he? Like, I think they he, gave him a Yeah, he passed the a, trial. A little, the golden one didn't uh, give him any bonus points, but, I mean, that right. was like, you know cool on you dude you just needed to get a alpaca didn't need to be yeah. the alpaca <laughs> right uh but wukulamat of course is gonna is not looking to force alpacas <laughs> enslave them uh she's 
trying to get one legitimately. So we got to do, uh, we got to get a harness. Um, and the only way to do that apparently, um, is to take, what did we start with? Some, some scraps of leather. I, I honestly cannot remember. And I just did this too on my alt. It's so uh, bad, but we started with something small yeah. and then we, I think we traded it up to, I think it was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we traded something up to a a coat, or was or it was like a, a jacket or something. It was a some sort of shirt that yeah, we traded. There, there it was for. several trades to eventually get to Moscow that we then traded in for the harness. Yes. So, um, I like that whole thought. Like one of my favorite episodes of the Office Office was trading some beans and, and going and and. <laughs> Um, our, our, oh my God! It, it's not. Um, it was Dwight, and Dwight, Dwight took a Dwight. Uh, he took a paper clip and he paper traded paper. it all the way up to a telescope. I know. Yes. And then it was Jim who was like, "Yo, I found these magic beans. I'll trade you that telescope for these magic beans." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he so ended up doing it. Oh, that's a it's great one of my favorite episode. Episode. Super Yes, funny. Uh, I was very impressed. Dwight was able to do that. I wouldn't be able to do that. So, but we play this mini game. Um, and I was so excited for this trading mini game, air quotes, mini game, because they had special UI elements whenever mm -hmm. we successfully made a trade. I'm like, oh, is this going to go somewhere where like this is we're going to see this throughout the expansion? We're going to um, be doing some new UI elements and you know, it, and literally was just to show off. Hey, we did it. Yay. I, there was nothing tied to it. It wasn't like an actual mini game. It was just an MSQ to make it all flashy and fun. Yeah, it was. Well, exactly. It gave it added just a little bit more zest to it. It was it was when we completed a, a trade, right? It would be yeah. like, oh, you traded the 100. Uh, what do they call them? Pels? Yeah, they call them Pels. Like a 100 Pell value uh, hatchet for this like 500 Pell um, jacket. Uh, I don't know, like bag of okay. yeah, jacket or bag of it, we, I know we did like these bag of leaves or something, these these like tea leaves or something that we had to get her <laughs> or something. Um and yeah, so it was like, "Oh, congratulations. You increased your uh, the item amount by this much." And so we were trying to trade all the way up to a, an alpaca harness so that we could go like tame an alpaca, like that was the whole deal. And you know, I did think it was cool because I think the whole purpose of this trial was to show off the Pelu Pelus um you know craftiness when it comes to trading like that their commerce right yep. so i think that's what that's what Golul jaja wanted to instill into the contestants was their culture and how they um you know how they operate and and trade and 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 craft and and gather and stuff like that so ultimately you know wuklamat got to experience all that which was great you know zorulja cheated a little bit but you know whatever he still got his little his little hard candy um Cheated so, or yeah. was just super efficient? He was efficient about it. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I guess there is something to be said about, you know, brute forcing something. It's not necessarily the wrong way to do it if you can do it, like, by all means. But Fair enough. You know. um, and, yeah, we only saw Zoral Ja. We don't know how the other two fared on this trial. Um, so maybe there was some crisscrossing. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that this UI element that I was so excited about will be used anywhere else? I hope so. Uh, yeah, I think it would be kind of silly to just leave it behind. I, I feel like uh, it could be used in something in the future, um, some sort of content, maybe some trading content or crafting content, you know, something uh, Pelu Pelu adjacent. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, it's funny you least, say that. You, you, say, you say Pelu Pelu adjacent, and I think that may, maybe would have worked out if, they, if the Pelu Pelu were the gathering social, the social gathering tribe. tribe. But since yeah, the combat, the combat one, it's like, one. I don't, yeah. it's like, oh, that seems weird. So my only thought, and I put this in notes, you know, maybe it's part of the new social content, you know, the galaxy. Yeah, galaxy exploration. Thing, galaxy exploration. That could be really so cool. So yeah. maybe that'll be there. Hmm? Yeah, I could dig it. Um, What are your thoughts on the Pelu Pelu overall? You know, I, I like that they're a merchant tribe. Um, I, I like their, their stance on things. Um, I kind of wish I would have seen what they looked like. You know, they're not moblins where it needs to be. They have to have the mask on. So the moblins are the, what the moblins are. But like, I feel like the Pelopelo are just humans that are just wearing 
costumes. They're just very small people. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of, I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I would... Funny enough, now that I think about it, they're just kind of like halflings or hobbits. Like, le legitimately. I think they're you know, just they seem like... Hume children. Like, they're, they're Hume children models. And they just yeah. have costumes on them to hide the fact that they're Hume children. <laughs> yeah, they could be. For sure. Yeah, just a bunch of kids all running the running the show over there in Urkabacha, for sure. Yeah. All right, so we get all the trading done, uh, and we get our harness. So now we're going to do the actual trial, right? So, you know, we're, we're ready to, you know, fight some monsters to save some alpacas, right? And then we're going to be in and do a mini game to, to harness and, you know, uh, tame our uh, one alpaca, right? We get to, we get sure. to do all that, right? That sounds really cool if that happened, yeah. Did it, did it not happen? No, it, I know we got a cutscene though. We got uh, a cut cutscenes scene? are cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this is the expansion of. All right, Wook, you got this. Us Warrior of Light and friends, we're gonna stand over here, and you let us know if you need help. Because <laughs> that's exactly so, what freaking happens. <laughs> thematically, it's fine because ultimately we want Wu Klamat to be the one doing all this, right? Like yes. she's gonna be the one who runs everything in the end. Yes. So like it would be silly if the Warrior of Light literally did everything for her. But when Fair. it comes to being a video game where yes. you want to interact with it, <laughs> it doesn't come out very fun. So it's kind of. <laughs> They're, they're kind of at odds with each other, the two ideas here. Like, so. if this was a book or a TV show, that's one thing. I'm playing a game. I'm controlling. Yes. I am I am immersed in, in part of this narrative. <laughs> the fact that I am not doing anything to affect the outcome, basically. Like, if you really think about it, we had nothing to do to affect this outcome. Right? We helped them trade. We did. We did assist with the trading all the way up to the harness mm. but then after we got the harness basically it was it was you know Campfire, job to, tent, tent up yes. wait for her to yeah wait for her to it's go a... do whatever she did and yeah, we don't even know what she did we didn't even get to see her wrangle it we just yep. she just she does went it off screen and came, <laughs> came back the morning later and has an alpaca and and we just have to like oh oh she's exhausted she spent all night wrangling that alpaca um yes. so yeah uh whole first part there's like no battle content none right i don't think there's pretty even a, much i don't think there's even an instanced nothing instanced for a while i mean outside of like you know clicking on spot to collect something but oh no like a creature appears you have to slay it real fast you know like in the in the open world you just oh monster appears kill it real fast then you go back and you collect the item or something you know what i mean like that's basically yeah. all the combat that we did so <laughs> the chat says your very presence was an inspiration and a big help <laughs> correct sure sure yeah um yeah the only battle content um i made sure i did my initial fates so that i could get mm -hmm. enhanced mount movement so yeah that's pretty smart i didn't think about that i just yeah, ever since shadowbringers I'm, i've because you know in shadowbringers I made you guys carry my ass around because I was like, no, I didn't get that done. I didn't get that. So ever since Shadowbringers and Walker, I make sure to get my enhanced and then I get my flying. So I'm doing my thing, doing my part. Smart. <laughs> Efficiency. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here's the other funny part. Um, we have barely any battle content. You know, I did do a um, Wondrous Tales and drop that off for half a level. I feel like we had hit almost 92 by the end of this zone and we hadn't really done anything. I, I did five fates um, mm -hmm. to unlock the mount speed, but like, how do you, how does that sit with you to not really do anything, but to get two levels? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, oh they God, were leveling... pretty generous with, yeah, they were pretty generous with handing out experience points for this expansion, uh, for sure. Um, in fact, I'll tell you right now, like, I just leveled up an alt all the way through the story. I skipped most cutscenes, to be fair. But I didn't get level gated until level 99. Um, so, and that's just literally just doing all of the missions and then just doing the dungeons as they came up. I didn't do them multiple times or anything like that. I just did them as they came up. I didn't do any fates. I literally just like whoosh, all the way up to 99 and then i finally got gated so wow. um you know uh pretty generous 
yeah. with experience points. That's pretty generous. Um, the fact that you can get to level 100 and do the minimum amount of actual battle content. That seems a little, a little much. All right. Uh, after Okopacha, um, we complete our trial. She's got her uh, llama. I almost said llama. Uh, alpaca. Uh, she gets a stone. So, yay. One stone down. Six more to go. Uh, after this, we go to Koz. Oh my god, I keep butchering this name. Kozamaoka. Kazamaoka, yeah. And we're gonna see the Hanu Hanu, uh, mm -hmm. and we get the uh, feet of reeds. I believe is what it's called, right? That sounds right. That sounds about right. Sure. Um, yeah, and their main issue is that uh, their reed fields, their site of nourishment, um, everything is kind of withering, and they want help. So they are using this opportunity for this feat to enlist help from uh, the applicants for the Dawn Servant. Um, and our main, you know, we had Zoral Ja in the first zone. Uh, our main competition here in this zone, because not everyone's, you know, around at the same time. Uh, we got Bakul Jaja -Ja and we have mm -hmm. Kona. Kona as well, yeah. Uh, again, another beautiful zone. Uh, definitely contrasted from the first one, which is kind of, you know, mountainy, a little bit arid. This one's jungly, water everywhere. Um, yeah. I've really enjoyed this zone. Um, what are your initial thoughts of the zone and, and the feet that we got going on here? I think it's really cool. Uh, I think the zone itself is gorgeous. Yeah, like you said, I think it is definitely one of the better, if not the best, like, rainforest zones that we've ever gotten. Like, it yeah. is definitely um, just... Like, right up, like, when I think Rainforest, that's what I'm going to think of now, is Kazumaoka. So, uh, I just like spending time there. I think it's really cool. Um, and as for the trial, I mean, we'll, you know, we can discuss it. But I like it. It's cool. Um, you know, their, their crops are dying, and we have to figure out why. And we end up finding out why. Um, and, yeah, I, I'm pretty interested so far um, when, when I first get there. Before it's got there, I should say. You, you know, like... <laughs> When the first thought of like, hey, what what's causing this problem? Like Wuklamot put out, you know, I think it's this reason. And I'm and my thought was like, that seems stupid. That that's that was my response. Like, that doesn't seem right. And then it turns out, no, nah, no, nah, she was right. <laughs> like her naivete basically led to her guessing the right outcome. And I'm like, Okay, sure. Yeah, we'll go with it. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm not writing. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, you know, that that's that's her character, okay? You know, she just kind of stumbles into things, all right? You know, it's it's whatever. Um but yeah, what? We find out that so they they had been performing this rite or something with mm. this this parade. big like float. Yeah, it's like a parade float. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like a float. And they ultimately they find out that like the float is like really like beat up and worn down. And so, like, the whole trial is to try to fix this float so that this, this like, ceremonial rite will, like, replenish the ether of the land. It's supposed to be yeah. some sort of, like, I don't know, probably, you know, some sort of akin, you know, primal summoning adjacent, right? Where, like, Fair. people are, like, you know, gathering up the prayers, which gathers up ether, like, just like when they're summoning a primal, and it, like, kind of, like, gives it to the land, and it replenishes the land, and the crops grow and stuff, yeah. so. The circle yeah. of aether, and then the, the Hanu Hanu take the aether from eating the reeds and the cycle continues um this is where the, the storm really comes up because the storm is what kind of wrecked the float mm -hmm. and it was yeah. just kind of a what i found interesting was like it was a tradition of doing this parade and doing this float but what was lost to time was the reason why it was being done um and and they were just like oh we could just skip it this year you know we have so much stuff that we have to do to recover from this storm the parade is just going to have to wait until whenever not understanding that the parade and that float and everything that is involved with it is integral to their culture right and so for and and this whole process and the feat basically uh the way we, we solved it um is reminding them hey there's a reason why you guys are doing this these pieces that are part of this float are all integral to your well-being, to your community, to your culture. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was actually really, really cool. Um, it's cool, and it's 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 interesting as well because 
Well, another of the, uh, you know, uh, competent competitors yeah. uh, cheats a little bit, like Zerulja in the first trial, where Koana um, mixes up some sort of concoction because his whole thing is science and technology. Science. And, you know, screw this this whole, like, praying and, and gathering ether through the cer ceremony and stuff. I'm just going to literally concoct this, this um, solution that I can just throw in the crops and it'll just replenish their ether that way. Yeah. And he did, and it worked. And it's interesting. Again, when you're looking at what Galul Jaja probably wanted to instill into the com com competitors here, it was exactly what you just said. You know, this whole, um, you know, appreciation of the ceremony and the culture and, and you know, their rights and stuff like that. Um, but Koana is able to fix the problem through his own way, which also kind of contributes to his side of the argument where he believes that with the right application of science and technology that he can bring more prosperity to uh, Tural as a whole. And that's what he does. And so, I mean, looking at both sides of the, the equation here, like, you can definitely see that there are pros and cons to both. You know what I mean? Yep. So I, I kind of like how they both kind of fixed the problem. They didn't really cheat this way, you know? Like, I kind of feel like Zoral may have cheated a little bit more in the <laughs> alpaca competition, okay? But, um, you know, I just I, it's interesting to see the, the two different sides of this, this, this coin, so to say, this, this, um, this problem that they, they figured out, so. Yeah, I like that um, they're showing that there's more ways to solve a problem than just the one that we find um, with the MSQ. Yes. Um, uh, glad that we thwarted Bakul Jaja's attempt, though, to uh, mess things up because he just wanted to, to wreck the float. We had to kind of sh show a force like that. Nah, ain't, ain't happening here, yeah. Yep. Ain't happening here. <laughs> villain being a villain. Yep, villain he's just trying to, instead of figuring out the problem, he just wants to ruin it for everybody else. You know, yeah. that's what he does. So, all right. Uh, and we had a big tree. That tree was really big. That was the like we had to go up to find that the one uh, Rothgar guy. Yeah, I, I feel like it took yeah. a, a minute to actually climb the whole thing. You know, it did. So around, 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 <laughs> around, 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 around very tall. <laughs> did you yep. enjoy that? I don't remember his name, but do you it, did you enjoy the interactions? And he was just so weird. I thought he, he was, was fun. Grovel, 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 grovel. No, it's okay. Well, then it's okay. Yeah, he, it, that. <laughs> It didn't really ever get old. I thought it was a pretty, f and they didn't overuse it, but I thought it was a funny joke. Yeah, where he like, oh, he's so proper and prim and stuff, and then when once the person is like, you don't have to do that, he's like, all right, cool, thanks, and I just won't do it again. <laughs> I just thought it was cool. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, overall thoughts for Kaza Maoka? And, I enjoyed and, it, and the two initial zones uh, in general. Yeah, for, for the the first part of seeing it, because there is a second half to both zones that we will end up revisiting yeah. uh, pretty shortly. Um, but I thought the initial uh, introduction to them was good. Uh, like you said, probably some more combat would have been nice to split up the nonstop cutscenes um, mm -hmm. and in dialogue. But ultimately, as zones themselves, I thought they were really uh, well done and well made. And um, I do like going back there, even if it's just to do an S rank or a, you know a hunt train or even some fates. If I'm like low on experience and I want to level up to the next level, I'll go do some fates. And I just like being in the zone. I, th I think they're really nice. The music for both zones is really good too. So uh, I like them. That's fair. Um, yeah, I, I will say with uh, Costa Maoka, uh, at least there was some combat here. Uh, we had to clear the parade path. So we went down the whole parade path and killed some monsters and uh, various right. wildlife and stuff. So there was a little bit of combat here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, but after this, uh, we get back uh, to Thule uh, to be like, okay, wh where's our next feat? Um, looks like we have to do uh, another boat ride. Um, I guess this is another thing to, to bring up is that apparently Woke Lamont has a big thing with uh, motion sickness. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't. What, there's another character that it's like gets super motion sick all the time from something that I just played or read. I can't remember. Damn it, that's gonna bother me. But yes, she definitely has a motion sickness issue, which is definitely vibes because I also get super motion sick. So, oh. uh, 
Yeah. Feels bad. Uh, so we have to take a nice boat ride on a fast river. Um, and that is our first dungeon. Um, it's a looky lick a look I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these things. I think before that, uh, not the sidetrack, but oh, I do think, was it, I think before we do the dungeon, we, we get to do the 1v1 against Galul Jaja. I think that's when we do it. Uh, I'm pretty no, sure. That's uh, actually a little bit later. That's actually Is a little it? bit later. Yep. Uh, we actually meet the Moblins and we're like, oh, we need to get a crafter. We head back to Thule. That's right. And then while right. they're, so, they're searching for the crafter, we get summoned by, by Dad. So that's right. We'll that get there. Okay. Yes. I, I actually um, looked that up because I love that part of the story. Um, so yeah, there really wasn't was, much except, you know, we had to figure out a way to get to the next part as far as I know. Yes. We had to figure out how to get like to a certain part of Kazumauka because our, our next trial is with the Moblins. Right. So yeah. we have and to. And the storm knocked out the lift or that's whatever it was. Right. That's right. The storm, the storm made it so that we couldn't take the normal path. We had to go. Uh, like an alternate path and the only way was through down this river uh mm -hmm. and i can't remember what the dungeon is called you didn't put it in the damn patch or the notes so i don't know I what it's know. called something like that it's or something i think it ends I with tumu i don't know whatever but yeah it's it, it's a cool dungeon dawn trail dungeons here we go we're finding it out right now <laughs> oh Ehio Katamu. It's the river. It's the river dungeon. Uh, good, sure. Good dungeon. Yeah. You know, I mean, not memorable because I don't remember any of the bosses. But, wow, dude. I mean, how, how, I, was how just much have you done I was just excited to actually do something, you know, after two half zones of minimal at best, you know, combat content, a lot of talking, a lot of talking. I want to say, God, it was like eight hours of just exposition and talking That's and what it feels like uh yeah. it was it was it was kind of harsh um it was it was nice to finally do a dungeon yeah um and i feel yeah, like we're I mean, level 93 doing the level 91 sure. dungeon <laughs> for sure um it's always kind of a hit or miss for me when it comes to dungeons where they they will they seriously gate like the first few pulls because we're on a river in the first part of this dungeon, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're 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 waiting to go down this this river. We fight some mobs, and then we come up to Bakul Jaja's ship, you know, and he's of course trying to sabotage us. So he sends out some monsters of his own, and we got to fight them off. So I know there's a few dungeons that do this. Uh, the one that comes to mind too is the dungeon with uh, where we're on the top of Bismarck in Shadowbringers, yeah. and we got to go to the I think it's something in Niter. It's one of the Niters. Yeah. Um, and yeah. amnesis a nighter maybe yeah. and um you know because that it just kind of like slows down the dungeon but it's it's still fun it's cool yeah and the first it's boss dramatic. is the giant manatee, manatee. yes remember big old manatee Prime guy punity. yep and that's cool because it's like literally aoe spam everywhere you gotta like dodge all the aoes it's cool mm -hmm. and then as we're, we fight that boss we're going to the next to the next boss we come up on thancred yuriange and Koala, which we haven't even mentioned, by the way. Thancred and Yurianje decided that they are going to participate, but they want to be on um, Kiwana's side. Yeah, they, they so, had signed a contract with Kiwana um, before we even had a hint that we were going to talk to Wuklamat. So they had plans in motion to come over to the New World before we had, you know, even met her. So um, yeah. it's it's kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, another reason, like like for sure like oh we're totally melding because there's we we might have a little tussle like uh, a single player instance thing like we fight Thancred and RJ, we beat them down we show them who's boss but like at the end of the day like you know we're all homies so we're, we're yeah <laughs> we're gonna it kind of happened here we're like where we're going from the, the first to the second boss and then we're, we come up on them and then Thancred does a double down which destroys the tunnel we were going to go down so he's like you know sorry guys you're gonna have to take the side path and they they run off yeah. right so it's like haha you know just like little fun jabs at each other mm -hmm. and then we go down and, and the next boss is like this big it's kind of like a gubu it's like a like a big furry gubu guy yeah, drowsy yeah and then he like summons a bunch of like clones which are really cool like these these little slimes that turn into all the party members yeah. so it's always cool to see like your character model and your glam and all that on some other like slime dude and you gotta kill it. it's cool 
Um, but after that, we get out of the cave and we're running down, and then we, we end up getting to the final boss, which is this big. It's like Akamoth or something. I can't remember what it's a called. Apple, this like Apple, big looking like Apple Yon. It's a big mantis thing. Big yeah, mantis enemy. I think it's from Final Fantasy Nine. I'm pretty sure it's an enemy from Nine. Um, and I don't know. Like I did the dungeon with Ultima and Mimi, and um, we like slaughtered the boss before he did like the actual interesting part of the fight, which is when he summons <laughs> the tornado, the wind tornado, and it's like traveling around and shooting out the AOEs. Like we just killed it before that happened. Well, yeah, I'm sure. So, like, I'm sure you guys were 93, synced out into 92. Exactly. And like, had we were gear, just, like, and and you guys know your jobs at that point. Like, so yeah, you're just gonna just slaughter pretty much everything, right? <laughs> so like we skipped the cool part, but I still enjoyed it. It was a fun dungeon for what it's worth, and um, you know, from a story standpoint, kind of not very consequential because it's literally we're just traveling from point a to point b we just got something to do in between mm -hmm. and um but and we do it. Cool jaja, and we, man. it a jerk man yeah the causing, cool jaja, causing yeah. problems with our manatee which causes us to have to go through the caves and all that yeah, yeah. um big jerk but yeah but yeah we make it to uh the next part of kazamaoka kazamaoka so. uh yeah uh and this is where we at the trek over to see the moblins uh find out that they have had problems with the storm um that have caused them to uh have a hitch in their operations uh, what's cool about the the moblins uh is that they don't really do anything themselves they have they set up what's a contract they call it a pot pack but mm -hmm. basically they it's not even indentured servitude it's just Maybe it is. Maybe that's the best way to put it. It kind of is. It's weird because they're called like the pot sworn, right? So yeah. there's some sort of like sworn pact that they have to make it's a with these moblins. It's yeah. yeah, for all intents and purposes, they're signing, you know, this contract where they have to work for these moblins and craft them certain things and Yeah, whatever the contract comes, and then the moblins in turn give them everything that they need. Whether it's the tools that they need, uh the comforts, uh food you know, and it's the goblins, the moblins' job to figure that all out and, and give them what they need. So, you know, you're working, you're working your butt off, but you're given, you don't have to worry about anything else except the work. Everything else is taken care of for you by the moblins. So yes. It's a very interesting uh, dynamic that their culture has. And apparently they've been doing for generations. So um, mm -hmm. if it works, it works. And they put out high quality content, uh, uh, merchandise. So, Cool. Uh, the problem with the storm is that uh, it, it wrecked a lot of their infrastructure. Yeah. Um, and so they weren't able to take care of their pot sworn like they, they were contracted to do, which left some of their crafters to peace out. Like, this is just like the worst environment. I'm not going to stay here if it's the worst environment. Mm -hmm. um, what's your initial thought on the Moblins, dude? I think the moblins are cool. They're definitely a different take on goblins because oh, yeah. the goblins, oh, yeah. at least from Eorzea, are very much the crafters. They are very much the inventors and Tinkers. you know they take yeah you know, they take care of business when it comes to making machines. I mean, I'm pretty sure they made like almost all of the things we fight in oh, the yeah. Alexander raid tier. Uh, that's mostly all uh, goblin made stuff. So if they're not um, automatic defenses from Alexander himself. So yeah, yeah. So there are, uh, so the, so it was interesting to see like you know these moblins are more like caretakers or managers like they they manage the talent and the talent is the one who makes the you know crafts the yeah. the items. So, um, but they're cool. They're friendly. Um, there are a few quest lines. I think it was one of the um, the plus quests that I did for uh, flying uh, for the moblins. Yes, where yes. it. Um, it shows a nice little little relationship between a crafter and a moblin. You know, this, mm -hmm. this crafter is about to retire, and this moblin really wants to do something special for this crafter before they retire, and it's just really sweet. Um, and vice and... versa. The, the, the crafter wants to do something special for the moblin yes. because the moblin's taking care of him the whole time, and they've formed a nice, <sighs> you know, not a romantic relationship, but, like, they've really depended on each other. And... They respect, yeah, they're dependent and respect, and, and it's, it's really cool to see that kind of relationship between... Um, you know, especially like a beastman, like a moblin, and like a person. So, yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> it's good. Um, 
so what we are tasked with uh, in this read of uh, feed of pots uh, is to you know they're 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 focusing on fixing their infrastructure and getting things back up to normal. What they need is crafters to come back because it's not like crafters are just automatically just going to venture out into Kozumaoka on that upper tier level and just come visit them. <laughs> you know, they yeah. don't have the foot traffic of people just roaming through their village. So we're tasked with finding someone that's willing to, you know, enter into these contracts. Um, and that leads us back to, to the Yolo, um, back to the capital, uh, where we have one of the better uh, instance con combat con pieces of content that I've, mm -hmm. I've had in, in quite a while, um, only surpassed by, you know, the kind of copycat one uh, later. Uh, but yeah, we get to fight Gulu Jaja, uh, and it, it was a really fun fight. It was. Yeah, so... You know, if you watch the Dawn Trail trailer, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the FMV for the beginning, uh, you see, you know, John Fantasy, you know, fight Galul Jaja in his nice little Viper form. And, you know, so the, the developers wanted to make sure we get to experience that ourselves with our characters. Yeah. So that's the, that's the whole thing. Like, Galul Jaja is like, all right, like, you've been traveling around with my daughter. Like, let's let's see what you really got. Like, we've heard stuff about you, but let's see what you really got. And so, we, you know, it's a friendly sparring match, which, again, forgot to mention, we actually do see uh, it is Astinian when we first get to the throne room at the very yes. first part. We see Astinian fighting Galul Jaja because they both love to fight, and so it's a friendly sparring match between them. And we're like, what, what are you even doing here, Astinian? And he's just like... I don't know. I just kind of decided to come for fun, so I'm just like chilling. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. so funny just his to nomad, see all these. Signs. His nomad. Yeah. Out, he's gone to the east. He's all like, I just, you know, I decided I'm gonna come west now, and I'm just gonna go west. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fancy meeting you guys here. Yeah, fancy that. Um, I I do like that because I know that in a lot of the trailer stuff it's kind of baiting they're, they're showing you stuff in the msq but it's not necessarily one for one uh mm -hmm. like with n walker and alice a when she was injured um and alpha no that wasn't in thavnir where that was kind of depicted mm -hmm. that happened in garlemald yeah um so the fight with derp and gula jaja in that trailer it was actually that was the, all the moves that happened. You can actually kind of see one to one. That was actually a Stinian fighting Gulu Jaja. Yes. So that was kind of cool to see. We still got our fight, but yeah. they weren't going to necessarily put a Stinian. They you, know, you got to put your blender in there somewhere doing something cool. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I thought the fight was the instance fight itself was really cool. I I enjoyed it both the times I did it on my alt and my main. So, yeah, uh, and I actually think it was nice. Um, because we'll get to this a little bit later, there was kind of a precursor, it was kind of a learning device. You know, here's this little bit, you know. That's right. And you, when you do the next fight uh, down the road, you're like, oh, I remember what these, these pieces are. You know, we're going to build on that. So that was, that was good stuff. Uh, and then while we're doing that, um, well, they, then we get interrupted by Wookla Munch. She's like, what are you doing? Daddy, stop fighting my friends. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's also pretty sweet too, because Golul Jaja is like, you know, please like look after my daughter, or like yeah. you know, she means the world to me. Like, just I, I, you know, do what you can to make sure she's on the right path and all that. And you promise. And then Wuklamat later is like, oh, what did you guys talk about? And you could, there's like a couple choices. One of them is like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, like you know, just just dad stuff. You know, your dad talked to me a little bit. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a, we're not exactly dating Will Clamot, okay? You don't need to like you know threaten us with a shotgun or beat us up. <laughs> True. I mean, he did kind of beat us up a little bit, so he maybe he thought bit. we were dating. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh my goodness, why did I forget? Um. This is the point though that uh, where I realized, yeah, something's not right because he never brought the head of reason out. Never gave us his full it's, power. It's funny, and I just and it was actually my second playthrough on my alt where I realized this because there is a small cutscene during the fight 
where he goes to charge up his magic. And he's charging up his magic, and he looks over at his at his yeah. brother, his his other head, and he's like, oh, that that's right, oh, yeah, I can't. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he and only that's like... when he, he, like, he does something different where he's, like, using different magic, and you see, which we'll get to, but let's just say we rematch him a little bit later on, maybe him in his prime, and when he does that move, oh, it's something completely different yeah. and definitely more badass. Yeah. So, yes, now that it, it did take me having to do it twice, which is cool because, you know, you, you know, the kind of things you realize when you go through a story a second time is, is these little cues, these little clues that they put in sure. that's going to sprinkle out some mystery, you know? And so I didn't realize it my first time through. And now, now going back, I'm like, oh, damn. Like, they were signposting that from, a, from a pretty early, so... Yeah, I didn't know what exactly was going on with the head. We do find out uh, a little bit later, but like, I knew something wasn't right. Like, because this is the second time we've seen him, still hasn't coming out. He's in multiple fights and never brings his brother out of napping. Like, something's not right. Yeah. So, keep that in your head. Keep that in your head. Uh, after that, we go down to Waku Meki Meki and uh, we go recruiting for a crafter. We're going we're gonna to steal a, a crafter from Waku Meki Meki. <laughs> What's funny is that we, before we had, and, and this is maybe the part that you were referring to before we went out on the river, I think we hooked up the crafter that we met on the boat. Yes. With the, with, the, with a job. With a job at, at the Waku Meki Meki. And then we go back to Waku Meki Meki and like, hey, that, that guy that we, you know, yeah, I need him for this. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Sorry. We're just going to take him real fast. Yeah. Don't worry about it. But he's like an elven guy, right? He's got like yeah. green hair. I don't remember what his name is. Uh, but he like owes us one for something. I think probably because we saved his ass on the we boat. Saved, right? We saved him on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, so he's he owes us one, and so he he's like, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. You want me to do? It's fine. Um, I can't remember where he's from. He's from somewhere. Is it from Ishgard? I can't remember. He's like mm. from somewhere in the mainland. I can't remember. Could be Gordania. He's a. I think he's a dusk white. Anyway, uh, whatever. But yeah, he he's like, yeah, I'll I'll come with you, you know, and and do whatever you need me to do, because you know you're a cool guy or or gal if you're a gal warrior like. Um, so yeah. So we have our, our crafter um, and then we start heading back to the Moblins. And this is also where we see how everyone else is doing. Um, I, I don't remember. Did Kiwana find someone? I I'm think guessing so. he found someone. Um, Zoral Jaw basically threatened someone, in my opinion. And I think Bakul Jaja was trying to kidnap someone's... Kidnap someone's, yes. <laughs> someone's I know crafter, because he couldn't be a, bothered. There was a Viera involved somewhere. She was one yeah. of their crafters. I can't remember if it was Zoroljaz or think, if it was I think Kowals. that was Zoroljaz. I think that was Zoroljaz. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's got their method of finding a crafter to help replenish the ranks in the Moblin town. Yeah. Uh, except for <laughs> Bakul Jaja. Again, classic villain... Can't be bothered to, to do the work himself. He's just got to insert himself and be a jerk to someone else. Like, how many stones does he have to have at this point? Like, none? I mean, maybe we didn't get to see him do the, the, the maybe, maybe alpaca. He's got, maybe he's got one from the alpacas. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> he couldn't have gotten one from the the Hanu Hanu, right? Because, like, he didn't do anything. So, I like what is he what is his his goal here you know what i mean like he can't be winning i think his i think his goal was to just assert his strength and just steal from everyone else so yeah so maybe yeah. and that's this is this is where i got that idea is like he's not actually doing anything the only way he's going to do this is if he's going to take stones from someone else um which that, and that, we start that's to see right. down the road that does end up being his goal is like you know he's going to let everybody else do the job, do the work, and then he's just going to swoop in and take their gems from them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so. And he's got a, he's got two heads. He's got a, you know, a warrior side and a magic side. So, and those interactions between those two are just hilarious as well. So. They are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we think we're done. Uh, we're going to head to Orkapacha part two, the upper lands there. Um, and then we stop for a moment. Uh, apparently there's, you know, urgent need uh, for Wook Lamont back at the Malvin town. So we wait for her, you know, on the edge of town, but she goes back and then 
We wait. And we wait. And we wait. What the happened, one dude? time, what the happened? one damn time, when the Warrior of Light doesn't just, like, go with them or, like, no, we'll take care of this. We'll go see what's going on. The one time we let some random NPC go deal with their own something, they end up getting kidnapped. Because, of course, they do. Because they know <laughs> if, if we were there, it wouldn't have happened, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. It just... It's a little contrived, okay? It's a little tiny, teeny bit contrived. Well, she didn't get kidnapped on, on the alpaca. She didn't get kidnapped then. We let her That's go true. by herself then. That's true. But so, yeah. so maybe, she gets, maybe that was the precedent, yeah. She gets kidnapped. Whole ordeal, which it's just it's so much talking, you know, trying to track down this kidnapper. And then the whole instance thing where we basically have to be super ninjas and... That thing took, like, 15 minutes, it felt like. Not only do we have to follow one dude back to, like, the camp, but after we get back to the camp, we have to follow another dude to yeah. another camp, dude. Yeah, they, they basically, there was, there was a handoff, and now, oh, we got to follow this new dude to his spot. Like, oh, my God, this is just, can we just, and, and it's not the only time that this kind of content happened in this expansion, but. Um, no, it's not. I don't look. I don't mind the little sneaky ninja parts, but like in moderation, and like you didn't have to do two of them in a row, man. Like that's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. Um, and if you're not killing anything, and like, thankfully, I didn't miss mess up at all, so I didn't have to reset yeah. at all. Thank God. Yeah. I was really worried, like I'd mess up and I'd just be pissed because it's just it's not engaging gameplay. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, it's 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 stealth gameplay. In an MMORPG, so like you can kind of figure out how in, you know in depth that is. Not very so. <sighs> um, but this is where the thought was like, hey, we're gonna join up and join forces with uh, Kona, uh, really come to bear because like his sister has been kidnapped and he's Correct. all about like, I'm on it. Let's go. Let's figure this out. Thank Red, Arianjay, all on board. Like, cool, teaming up. Let's do it. Um, Thank Red gets back to his, you know sneaky spy roots I'm um, gonna track down uh, because they messed with our raft again our manatee fucking jerks I swear to god of course they did yep so they 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 lop off uh, snip off the manatee let our manatee go from our raft so we can't follow them down the river to where they're holding Wilk Lamott so Thancred does his spy games and tracking right to track down where they're at and relays that via link pearl um and that's where we get dungeon number two is that right no is that that's no, just that's just an instance right i think it's just an instance yeah uh, let's see here i honestly don't remember i think i like skipped through all of that on on my alt of course not on my main but like i oh, can't yeah, remember yeah that was just an instanced uh combat instance combat the next dungeon is not till uh urkel pacha part two so yeah that was just instance part um i guess parts of going back to the original uh, that first dungeon um and we basically thwart uh bakul jaja from kidnapping um but he does make away with our stone doesn't he because I think it, he does. Yeah, he takes, I think we get it back later. Yeah, he takes our stone uh, from the moblins. Um, they're not going to give out another one just just because. So um, we got to figure out a way to get our stone back from Bako Jaja. But hey, we we rescue Wuklamat. Uh, overall, yeah. I thought that was a pretty okay. Again, a, a lot of okay, a lot of meh. You know, just kind of is what it is, and nothing. I was like hyped about there's no yeah it did <sighs> nothing to like super duper like get your heart racing or anything like that it yeah. was like yeah of course we're gonna save Wuklamat she's not gonna fucking die here like we're gonna we're gonna go get her it was it it was cool seeing Koana's relationship with his sister he really 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 does love her yeah and absolutely. seeing that like that that's when we really really see that in him we get to see him not composed that's the one thing like he has been so composed throughout this whole thing but the moment his sister is in danger he loses it yeah. like he actually like loses it so it was really cool to see him disheveled to see him worried um and i think that was really the whole purpose of that whole little part of the story was to see that relationship so i liked it we, we saw his scientific mind and his his beliefs um on what 
can be done better for the country. But this was good to see uh, his relationship with his sister is not cold and calculating like his uh, yes. thought process on the sciences. So um, he, he does have a heart. The kid has a heart. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, we get her back, but we don't get a stone or our stone was taken from us. So we only have two of the three now. So we got to figure out a way to get that back. Uh, mm-hmm. But we got to move on back to Urkopacha. Uh, to the land of the trolls. I mean, giants. I'm so sorry. You know more about that, right? Final Fantasy XI, man? Sure do. Yeah, they're they're literally just trolls from, they're the trolls from Final 11. Fantasy XI. Um, I don't know why they just don't call them trolls, because they call... The Mumble Jaws are also from XI, and they are just called Mumble Jaws in Final Fantasy XI. So, like, I don't know why they just didn't go with I, I think it's because but... they have trolls, and that's the Gobu reskinned model furry goop. So you don't want to. Oh, that's confused. yeah, the ones from from Labyrinthos, right? Yeah, they're they're trolls. So trolls. Yeah. May, so maybe you just don't want to confuse, and you want to make fair. them giants. And technically speaking, yeah. they are bigger than us, and the giant of the giant is absolutely huge. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, they they actually have two feats for us, um, kind of one after the other. But uh, the first one is feat of proof. Um, I forget why I, is this just to. I, I I'm forgetting what this feat was all about. I know wh- what we did. I don't know the reason why. We went to the graveyard. Was it just about understanding? The giants. I almost said trolls. Uh, understanding the giants and and what their meaning of dying was all about. I think so. I think it was just to learn about like their belief in death and like. As long as one like, person knows knows remembers yeah, it's you, like, as you're long not as their dead. memory is alive. Then yes, exactly. Their memory is alive, and they okay. are tr- that they will live with them, and you know what I mean. Like, so I think that's what it was, just to learn about that stuff so which is actually very integral to the second half of Dontrell's campaign yes um so put a put a pin on that um super important um thematically that Mm -hmm. one knows how passing and remembering of uh of the past and of family people that have died um it's important here and kind of instills into book you know, maybe mm-hmm. how it should be done versus maybe what we see in the future. True. Um, but to get to the person that's gonna, you know, give us our keystone, we got to climb a big jaw and giant mountain. Sure do. Yeah. And that's a uh, dungeon number two level 93 dungeon. I even forget what it's called now. What's the name of that? Uh, mountain didn't you have it here somewhere i can't Dead. remember well core oh, kind of that's the name of the mountain war core zormore yes because okay. so this dungeon yeah heck of a lot better than the first dungeon in my opinion you enjoyed it i yeah. enjoyed it a lot more um it just seemed a lot more frenetic uh we got to see uh more uh contestants uh zoral ja even pulled a fan cred on us like like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. You're going to have to take the long way around. Like, yes. guys, everyone's doing this. Was why? Correct. So yes. Take us down the bosses, dude. Do you remember bosses? Them? Yeah, sure. So um, the first boss is a pretty interesting one. It's like a snow bunny thing. Yes. Uh, some bunny. sort of ice thing. And the cool mechanic about this one was that it would, it would telegraph AOEs, like one after another, but it would then freeze one of the AOEs, like one of the things that's going to cause the AOE. So you would have to like dodge them in the opposite order of what you think you would, yes. uh, which is really cool. And it really makes your brain kind of tingle when you're thinking about, okay, well, you know, I, I feel like my body wants to be in this AOE so that I'm dodging the other one, but because it's frozen, I got to be in the other one. So, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. And then we're climbing up the mountain some more, and then Zoral Judd does his thing. We got to go up, and we get to this bird. It's a, it's a, uh, this, this, um, little little bird dude who um like attacks us with these stones like these these rocks will come down and then we have to like stand inside the rocks to not get like blown up in the air 
um, when he does this attack or something like that. Um, which is cool. That's another cool, cool little boss. It it really makes the safe spots really really tight in some of the few a few of the places. Yeah. So, um, and then we eventually climb all the way up to the top where we fight. I believe his name is Gerfler in this game. Gerfler. I know the the the, the troll leader in Final Fantasy uh, Eleven is also Gerfler. Oh, that's so funny. I think that's what his name is. That's funny. Um, but yeah, Gerfler fights us at the top, and his whole deal is it's like recapping the calamities. Yes. Um, and so, like, he has these, like, etchings and stones of the calamities that he'll, like, use. Like, one will be, like, the calamity of wind, and it'll blow you across the arena. One will be the calamity of water, and that's, like, an AOE pushback. And, um, you know, the calamity of stone, and the rocks will pulse, and you gotta dodge those. And he'll combine them near the end of the fight, um, which is really cool. So, uh, I like the boss thematically. I thought it was cool, and uh, just the mechanics was also really cool. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. And I know... Uh... From doing that with you and Ultima, uh, we we actually really liked the the artwork of the weapons in this dungeon. The weapons yeah, are they're all cool. like, they're kinda like crystal, jade. like carved out of crystal. Yeah. yeah, they got a jade look to them, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so we we finished this. Uh, Gerfler is actually the Dawn's elector uh, for the giants, uh, and he we we basically he explains to us. Um, that they put the deed that that happened in sealing away uh the big bird oh my god why am i forgetting the big bird's name valley garmanda valley garmanda thank you uh sealing away valley garmanda um they made a like a grave marker there because a lot of lives were lost and in, in sealing yes. that away um but they th their father's name is is etched in there along with uh quite a few other people's names of importance um one being i believe catamaran right Yes, Catamaran is listed on there, which is interesting because I think it's the first we've actually heard of him. We knew that he was the original explorer who found Tural. Found right? from from yes. yeah, found. Okay, the one who the one who discovered it from Eorzea. He right? Columbus so, it. No, <laughs> yes, he Columbus it exactly. So, but we never knew what happened to him. He just kind of like fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, he, and it's, he, it, he did a couple trips, right? He was there and came back, yes. and because there was an exchange, like he brought seeds and stuff there brought That's recipes right. back you know there was a back and forth and then he just stopped just stopped he just like vanished so. and so seeing him on the stone it's like oh okay well he must have actually been pretty tight with the people of Tyrell if he you know he was out fighting gigantic elemental hell birds with uh yeah <laughs> with uh galul jaja so which so. uh brings cryo to be like oh my goodness like that's awesome that he's here because she's looking for information on uh, her grandpa. Um, That's who, right. Who apparently was seen here. Uh, was his name on also on there as well? Was it Connemara uh, and, and her dad? Uh, and um, Galoof. Uh, I don't remember if Galoof Ga was Gal on there. Galoof. 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 Yeah. Galoof. 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 From five. I think, yeah, I think he was on there. I think he was. Either yeah, I think he was on there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, so good re re revelation. Uh, apparently we're on a path to finding more information for Kryle, which is good um, because you know what? She's awesome. I'm, I love that Kryle is part of our, you know, exploration party or combat party. She's always been on the sidelines. I've always felt she bad has, ever yeah. since Shadow uh, uh, Stormblood when she was in. Um, oh, my goodness. What's his name? Xenos? Xenos is uh, contraption siphoning off yes. Aether. So I've always felt bad. Like, you know, it's like, does she just not have the Aether to be, you know, one of the team? Like, or is she just so traumatized by that experience? She's like, no, I'm just going to stay here. But I'm glad that she's part of our, our crew now. I am too. And it's kind of a big deal because she's like the only Scion other than us who has the Echo. She's literally the only other person. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's kind of the whole re like. Like, her power gave, as far as I understand, it was, like, taking her part of that the Echo, like, gave Xenos his ability, which was, like, fake Echo, you know, like, yeah. artificial Echo. Yeah. And so, like, you know, Kryle's kind of been a pretty important part of the story for a while. She's just always, like you said, been sidelined when it comes to, like, actually taking part. And so seeing her actually engage has been really, really cool. Um, and you know it gets why. even better. 
Because of all that? the distaste of for Lollafells, like there's been so many bad Lollafells, like it's hard to you know introduce a good Lollafell. Sure, I don't know. I liked. And, um, I'm just saying. The last good Lollafell liked... was Papalimo, and he offed himself. Papalimo, so. that's that's him. I liked Papalimo, and he the dude went out like a baller too. He so did. like he did. And also during I, Stormblood. I liked him. He did. Yeah. Well, well it was, no, uh, was, that was technically it was right before. It was right that was before Stormblood. Evan end of Heaven's work. Um. <clears throat> And I like I like the the Sultana, okay, all right. But she's that's like oh that's Oh my it. god, she's so side side important. <laughs> all of the <laughs> all the leaders are very side important. It's like, yeah, okay. Now they are, yeah. We've like dealt with everything in Eorzea that could possibly happen, so it's like, okay. We've literally even like mended relations between the beastmen and the the people of Eorzea. So like to the point where uh, we don't even call them beast tribes, they're called uh, allied society quests. Correct. Allied society. So like there's literally everything is at peace in Eorzea. What could possibly go wrong now? Not even Garlemald. Garlemald's not even that. that, that that's yeah. a piece off the chessboard now. So, literally, it's like yeah. Now they're just doing their thing. So now yeah, we got to go find issues in other other lands. Literally, we have yeah. to go find conflict. We have to go anyway. find conflict. Correct. Or, or breed it ourselves. <laughs> yes. All right. So while anyway. we're dealing with that feat of proof um, and getting uh, yet another stone. Oh, the chat is laughing at us. Um, Bako Jaja is being his um, normal villain self and doing something really freaking heinous right now. This is actually villain this is, shit. This is villain shit. This is grade A villain <laughs> shit. This is like Asian level, like yes. causing some shit to go down. Sure is. He he fucks with the keepers and releases Vala Garmanda. Like, mm-hmm. how much of a a hole. You have to be to release this this primal that's been that ran amok that caused so many deaths, and you're just like, yeah, I'm just gonna release it because I'm a jerk. Literally, literally like a, a like a catastrophe. It, it would yeah. be like akin to him like like causing an earthquake or something. Like, why did he do this? Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and they really didn't give an explanation. I don't think. Like, really, like. Hey, he he like wanted to show off that he's like got this power, you know, like like yeah, I'm the strongest. Which he does. I have I have two heads as well. He, yeah, and he cut he casts this big old fireball and boom, he shoots out the ice that Valagramanda is in and it melts it and he Valagramanda gets out. And that's it. I, I I literally don't know besides the slow us down, I guess, which it certainly does, but it probably you know, it also puts, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of innocents in danger. Uh so, you know. Definitely villain stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, so what now leads us to our second feat with the giants, uh, the feat of ice. Um, and basically what was planned for the feat of ice is that we're going to help reinforce the, the bindings on Valagramanda. Now mm-hmm. it's, we need to reseal him and or kill him. So um, with a little bit of help from Aaronville, uh, he devises a way to track down this, Valor, this yes. primal that um, is hard to track because it can swap between three different aspects, right? Mm-hmm. Sure can. But he develops some sort of fire aspect locator. And so, yeah, yeah. we have to, like, follow this little finger as it's flying around you looking know. for fire stuff. Yeah. And it takes us to, like, a fire sprite. We got to kill the fire sprite. And it takes us to, like, another fire enemy. We got to kill that. Magma and it finally yeah. eventually gets us to... Eventually finds a uh, Valagramanda. Yeah, yeah. I, the memes of uh, <laughs> you've got fingered uh, come to mind here. Uh, Correct. Yeah, good times. Um, so yeah, we, we find out what, where <laughs> where it's going. And we're like, all right, we gotta we gotta go track this this beastie down, and we get our first trial. Um, and what a trial, dude! Valgramanda is uh, quite a normal trial. I don't know for that. for sure. Yeah, and um, if you do it with with trust, which I did. Um, you get to fight alongside uh, Zorulja. I think it's the only time, yes. it is the only yes. time, that you actually get to fight alongside Zorulja. So that's really cool. Yeah, even uh, Zorulja yeah, knows, like, yeah, this is, gotta, this is not going to be good. I have to help. Like, Yeah, Kawana's there too, right? And that's, that's how I'm pretty sure he is. Yes, I, I, I think, well, maybe depending on the, y- your job, maybe he's not used. That's true. Um, because I mean that's how they all get stones, right? Like because we yeah. definitely get a stone for this for a fighting guard. Like that's how Zerul Jaw gets his, and I'm assuming that's how Ko- 
Koala gets his. Yeah. Is by helping, because that's, that's what we do. We we fight Velagamanda on top of Warcore Lardor, and we put him down. <laughs> it down. Her. Could be her. Uh, and then, yeah. The Beast. The Beast. And then we go report to uh, Gerfler, and he's like, yeah, well, we were going to just like let you reinforce this ice, but you literally killed this creature that we've been protecting for like you know 100 years or whatever so uh here's a <laughs> here's your stone for doing that that's kind of crazy that you did that you know not even your father could could fight Valagamanda. so yeah. i mean to, in in their defense they even mentioned this like it was a weakened form it, the the point of getting True. on it so so quickly to do it so quickly is that it so it didn't build up its aether store power up didn't yeah. power up so if we took care of it now maybe we could defeat it because it's been so weak because it's been locked in ice for so long that's fair so it was like a collaborative effort you know yeah. the old group weakened it so that we could swoop in and then finish it off when it got released yeah exactly exactly um so yeah we we do it um I, again what do you think of the fight itself i loved it i thought it was really cool uh specifically in normal mode you get to see two aspects of it you get to see the uh ice and thunder aspects yes there's fires. a little bit of fire mixed in but that like knowing that we didn't see the fire i was like oh yeah they're gonna put that next or extreme and that's exactly what they did they put a fire uh mode in extreme so it was it was cool going coming out of the normal mode excited for the extreme because i was like oh there's so much they could do with the fire version and yeah it was cool so <laughs> all right um so this is uh this has been a <laughs> A, a lot of going on here uh with that we get our fifth is that our fifth yeah our fifth feet our fifth stone out of the seven um we've only got four because bakul is still one of them um the one, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get to him in the next zone but uh yeah we finally finished the first two zones i think the whole thing took like felt like 20 hours it was so sure much talking. feel like it it's yeah <laughs> Um, so it, it was, it was a lot of time just to take care of two zones. Um, I will say, I do like that. They took care of the split zones right away. Mm -hmm. Um, meaning that we're not coming back to Urquipacha or goes, uh, um, anytime soon again, unless it's for some sort of side quest. Um, unlike yeah. Avner or Labyrinthos where we came back for the latter half and it felt real disconnected. This felt felt right you know that that we yes. took care of all of it to, to one and we got the flying for both of those zones like right away yes so i agree that, yeah. that was nice uh how do you feel uh, about the first two zones and and where we're at probably by level we're level 95 finishing the level 93 stuff <laughs> yeah uh i i i enjoyed them um especially near the end uh where we got some solid combat um stuff uh in the trial and yeah. the dungeons that we were getting um I, I i thought that it did finally start to pick up some speed which it desperately needed yes. uh the story i mean so um so yeah i mean i i thought it was a lot of fun and i was excited to go into the next zone for sure absolutely it was good good first two zones um at this point though we are going to cut it here um because it's uh, an hour and a half Really diving into MSQ, man. There's a, a lot to dive into, man. There sure is. So next time we will come back um, with uh, Yachtel and Shaloni. Uh, so that, that'll that be good to big lore dumps, um, especially yep. in the middle after Yachtel. Um, and we will get to those job comparisons at some point here. That's, that's, that's the uh, plan. MSQ, we'll get it done. Yes, look forward to the job stuff, okay? The MSQ can be a little bit of a slog, but uh, I'm looking forward to talk about jobs because i got a lot to say about that. But Yeah, we'll dive into those. Um, but that is it for us. Uh, that is a wrap here. Piers, where can people find you, sir? I'm a bit of a ninja. You can't really find me anywhere. Oh, my uh, Lord. Truly, I mean, honestly, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, underneath my name, you can see uh, on Twitch, uh, Radio underscore Pierce. Funny enough, I actually checked my Twitch not too long ago. I don't know why, but I have like 15 or 16 followers. That's like more than I thought I did. So uh, I got to make content for the, the fans. All my 15 fans, dude, you're all waiting for me to to stream. So um, I'll definitely do Pick that game, yeah. soon. 
Um, or finish Dark, Soul, or Dark Cloud 2. Dark Cloud 2. That's probably what I'm going to do. I need to set aside just the day where I do Dark Cloud 2 and then just stream it because I had a lot of fun doing Dark Cloud 1. Um, <laughs> so look forward to that. And, um, you know, you can find me playing Final Fantasy. Um, I'm on the Leviathan server on the Primal Data Center. I'm usually on Final Fantasy 14 a lot. I've been playing a little bit of 11 lately. Got the 11 bug in me. Um, but I definitely play 14. I cap my tomes every week, so I'm definitely on there a lot. So come say hi, uh, send a tell. We can do something, a dungeon, roulettes, anything. Uh, let me know. Um, but other than that, yeah, you'll find me here doing podcasts with this guy. Uh, Yay! Which, uh, where, where can we find where can we find you, my friend? Oh, let's see. You can find me Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at Tarkov Gaming. Uh, playing Final Fantasy fourteen most days of the week. Also uh, grinding out, uh, working on some Dark Souls one. That has been a fun experience because uh, you know we die a lot. Uh, and then you can find me on Red Check Radio Saturday nights. Uh, we just finished Hades, like legit finished Hades. Got the ten clears done, so we're gonna do some uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, nice. Otherwise, yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll be back here next week with more Highlands Heroes uh, as we go into part two of our MSQ discussion. Uh, so until next time, y'all take care of yourselves. Stay safe. End of line, my friends. Goodbye. Thanks for coming.